right. <clears throat> Happy to be here. Um, first of all, audience participation. Um, before today, who had heard the term metaverse? Show of hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess you're a good crowd for this anyways. Um, who knows what the metaverse is? I don't know. <laughs> I was, I was gonna, my next question was going to be, who knows definitively what the metaverse is? <laughs> and if, if there's someone, I definitely want to talk to you. <laughs> um, so I, I don't think anybody's been able to, to avoid the term uh, the metaverse these, these past months. Uh, you have Mark Zuckerberg, who has been talking about the metaverse. He's going to uh, put in 10 billion uh, into the metaverse to build the metaverse in the next years. He's going to recruit 10,000 people. And what's positive for us, it's going to be in, in Europe that he's looking at the, that talent. Um, he even changed his, his, the company name to, to Meta. Uh, so that shows his intention. Um, you have Satya Nadella in the, the latest uh, Microsoft Ignite talking about the B2B um, or the enterprise metaverse, as he call it, calls it. Um, you have Fortnite and Roblox building parts of um, the metaverse. Uh, you have uh, NFTs selling for 69 million in reputable uh, auction houses. Uh, you have everybody and their aunt investing in Dogecoin and, and all sorts of uh, crypto, cryptocurrencies. Play to earn is a viable option. Um, so there's, there's just a, a ton happening here. Um, and these, um, so what we want to address today is kind of what is the metaverse, when is the metaverse, how is the metaverse, um, and these are not questions that we were going to be able to answer, but we, we just want to address and kind of have a, a different opinion from, from different, different aspects of the, the, um, the industry. So um, let's do a first round of introductions. Um, just quickly introduce yourself, who you are, what you do. Uh, let's start from the, the end, Vesku. Hi guys, um, my name is Vesa Mattipanen, or people call me Vesku. I'm the tech lead here in Microsoft Finland, leading the team of a uh, technology strategist and the architects helping our partners <coughs> build cloud solutions and stuff. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Laura Olin. I'm CEO at so one, uh, which is a Helsinki-based virtual studio. We've been in the business for like 11 years now. And uh, well, we are basically creating content uh, for the metaverse. And I think that what Mark Zuckerberg just said uh, helped us in like for the mainstream audience. It helped us to put everything in context, what we do, because it didn't really change what we do. It just gave uh, it a name. So, uh, yeah, so that's what we do at Zoan. Yeah, uh, my name is Chris. I'm the chief technologist at Vario. Uh, I've been working uh, with XR since 2012 and a kind of a mix between collaborative software and uh, the hardware side of it. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Anthony Vesterinen, uh, CEO of Immersal. Uh, at Immersal, we do um, spatial mapping and visual positioning for everyone, every device, everywhere. And that basically is the key building block of the metaverse. Yeah. And uh, we've been around uh, since 2015. Uh, we are uh, part of the boring middle layer uh, of the technology, but without us, there is no metaverse. Great to have you here. Um, fantastic panel. So I thought we'd uh, start off with uh, warming, you, warming up you guys first with quick fire questions. Um, so these are... Um, Sourced from my network. Uh, so quick, yes and no answers or one word, one word answers? No, we are politicians. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> so let's go. Uh, so we'll always go from uh, Vesco onwards here. Uh, quick answers. Uh, metaverse or metaverses in plural? Metaverse. Metaverse. Uh, metaverses. Absolutely metaverses. Okay, good. Uh, metaverse already here or not happening for X years, and you can fill the X if you want to. Already here? Already here. I agree, already here. Already here. The spectators and the um, people um, visiting here on their VR goggles, they are in the metaverse. They are there, yes. Metaverse threat or opportunity? <coughs> Both. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Uh, both. 
We just agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Scary, let's change. <laughs> Remember, you were supposed to surprise me also. Um, the real metaverse will need head-worn devices, yes or no? No. No, no. I have to say no. Yeah, no. Long term, no. VR, mass product in two years or five years? Already mass production. Mm, I'd say two years. Okay, out of those choices, two years. Who cares? <laughs> I knew I could count on you, Anthony. <laughs> AR glasses, everyone's eyewear in two, five, ten years. Eyewear contact. Mm. Five? Yeah, I would say uh, five or more. Ten. Web3, the metaverse, same, same thing or different? Same, same, but different. <laughs> Um, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's connected, so it's difficult to answer. They are connected, different. NFTs, bubble or the real deal? Who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, eventually, the real deal. Yeah, I think it's going to be the real deal, especially when, when connected with the metaverse. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, do you own crypto? No. Uh, not yet. Yes. Trading stock. Bored apes or punks? Pardon? Bo bored apes or punks? Punks. Bored apes. Uh, I don't get the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old for this. <laughs> Unity or Unreal? Uh, everything goes. Unreal for sure. It depends on the task, really. Unity. All right. Um, good. Are we, are we warmed up? Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. So um, I'm Petri Rajahame, um, partner at FOV Ventures. We're um, a new pre-seed and seed stage investment company, VC fund, investing in uh, the metaverse, the builders of the metaverse in, in Europe. Um, so together with my partner, we've been building our thesis for um, 12 to 16 months and um, around the metaverse. And we're, we've been very happy to see the, the, the vi our vision kind of fulfilling itself. Um, so if we, if we go kind of to the, the definitions of the metaverse first. So um, we, for example, take a very loose uh, approach to <coughs> the definition of the metaverse. Um, we, we take a lot of inspiration from the, the great essays that Matthew Ball has written. Uh, I recommend everybody have a, have a read if you haven't already. He's kind of calling it uh, the successor state of today's mobile internet, which I think is, is a good and loose definition uh, of the metaverse. Um, to us, it's kind of uh, a, a stack of technologies uh, from AR, VR, computer vision, machine learning, AI, 5G, blockchain. Uh, maturing in a state that we can kind of take ourselves from the, the 2D world into the, the 3D world. Um, so, <clears throat> let's start with uh, the easy question. Flora, what is the metaverse for you? Uh, yeah, oh, well, oh, nice that I got the easy question <laughs> first. Uh, well, um, as, I, as I said already in the introduction, um, it's very much connected to what we have been doing for years. So, basically, uh, 3D immersive content and stuff like that. Uh, when I look at Metaverse from where I stand, which is mostly like dealing with our, our clients and trying to make sense of all this technology for them and helping them to buy their own, whether it be business metaverses or content that they can hopefully also, that later becomes part of a bigger Metaverse. So. Uh, it's both like very practical things. It's, it's, it's really on a practical level, it's up to stuff like uh, should we use avatars here or what kind of technology can we use? Do people need headsets to access this? It can be, for instance, a virtual event or a virtual space. Uh, these kind of like 
really practical questions. What can we do with the modern day technology? How can we offer it? But at the same time, if I think about metaverse and everything, like also referring to what Olli was saying in, in his presentation, so it opens us up like such like huge questions of like businesses, who's going to rule there, or is there going to be one company that rules? Uh, Tim Sweeney from uh, Epic Games said in his interview that he believes that the a company that gets one billion users for their metaverse first wins. But I personally hope that that's not even the name of the game, that somebody should win. I would hope to see something more decentralized. Uh, but that <clears throat> business aspect is one question. Then, of course, even if we go further, we can go to very like philosophical questions, like about like what's, what is, what are we talking about when we are talking about being in a metaverse? Like, um, is it, what, what is it? Is it our consciousness in the metaverse or what the hell is happening? So your question is so big that I'm just trying to reach out to, well, to, yeah. uh, <laughs> to all, the, all the possible limits of it. Very good topics and, and some I, I want to get back to Yeah, but, but these on. are the things I think yeah. when I think about metaverse, yeah. depending on the context. Yeah, so uh, as you said, you've been already operational for 11 years, you've been building uh, awesome stuff on, on Unity, w winning awards here and there. Unreal. Uh, <laughs> Unreal, sorry. Um, <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> of course. Um, uh, so you've been, you've been doing a lot of virtual um, like spaces for companies, but you've all, all also been known for the, the concerts that you've been doing and, and stuff you've been doing in the, in the cultural space and concerts for Yvege or, or Nightwish. Um, so <clears throat> yesterday uh, I had the, the opportunity to actually go in real life to the, the stadium to unfortunately see Finland lose in, in a football game. Um, but, and, I, and I have to say, I, I, after 18 months, it, it felt pretty good to be there. The ambiance and, and the, the camaraderie, um, it, it was fantastic. But what, what do you see in a cultural like setting? What, what could the metaverse offer to this kind of an experience or in, in kind of like the concert space where you've been already operational? Hmm. Well, I think that uh, these both things are going to coexist. Like, like we have like uh, audio books and we have physical books and electronic books. So there is something for everyone uh, regarding concerts or entertainment or so on. So uh, yeah, that's true that the pandemic gave us a perfect opportunity to start exploring those virtual events and concerts because uh, nothing else was possible. And uh, I believe, and it seems like based on, on the discussions we've had with our clients, that the world has changed permanently so that even though there is like a physical event going on, so people will sort of expect that there's a parallel virtual event that they can join if they cannot be there. Like here. Like here, exactly. Yeah. So in that sense, we have already come a few steps forward to the metaverse. But then again, I think we are, unfortunately, everyone in this room is too old to sort of really uh, understand how, for instance, my, my friend who has a 12-year-old daughter was just explaining how, how she wanted to spend all her money in, in the concert of Ariana Grande in Fortnite and all the merchandise and whatever. And, and to be able to live that kind of life where you are like natively a metaverse user and, and, and your life is actually mostly happening there, I think that that train and, or that ship has sailed for us like a long time ago. So I think that the new generation will be experiencing the future in a totally different way than we are. I agree. Um, going to you, Vesku, what is the metaverse for you? It's a, it's a big thing. It's, a, it's a huge. It's bigger than life. And to make it a bit simpler to understand and, 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 and think about, I think it's a space. It's a space where real world and virtual world, they blend together. In, in, in from technology perspective, we are bringing compute into the real world, and at the same time, we are bringing the real world into compute. 
And uh, I think it's said there that virtual spaces don't exist, it's created. When we create the space, it's not a vacuum, it will be filled. And this is what we have heard this morning, many examples of how it will be filled. And we don't know how it will happen, but we know that there, there can be punk people or they can be tight guys and, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a big cultural thing. Yeah. So I've been, myself, I've been living in the early 90s, uh, the dawn of the internet, and it was mind-blowing. But nobody really understood what will happen. Yeah. We need the technology and stuff enabling things there. But at the end of the day, with all we just discussed, that was a really good stuff because we need the economy and culture and all these things, all the aspects of life coming in there. Yeah. But I, I, for me, it's a space. It's like a canvas that you can draw. Yeah, that's a really good way to look at it. And people have intuitively thought about the metaverse firstly as kind of gaming or or the entertainment side, um, and not necessarily link Microsoft to, to the metaverse in, intuitively. Uh, but actually, um, when you look at your offering, you have the, the HoloLens, there's the, the Kinect, there's uh, Altspace. So actually, um, um, and what Satya Nadella was, was saying about reinforcing the fact that you are kind of building the enterprise um, metaverse, but looking at your offering, I guess we should see you as pioneers of, of the metaverse. Yeah, we've been doing that for years. Uh, Alex Kidman said that we've been working with Metaverse 12 years, but, the one, but we don't either know what it, what it will be. We are as clueless as everybody in this room. We are trying, we have some assets in enterprise side like Teams. Of course, it's a place of collaboration and, and hub for working together. We will bring that into the Metaverse, whatever it will mean. That's natural. We are the platform provider, so we do the platform. We want to have the most comprehensive cloud <coughs> platform that will enable Metaverse for our partners to build on top of that. So we have to bring the security, identity, governance, all these kind of also boring stuff there, but to make it safe. And, and all it did, did not touch really the who will regulate this thing. And that's a, that's a, that's a big question. Yeah. And, and, and we already we see that we know that Metaverse will not happen without cloud. Technically, and, and also, there, there are many reasons for that. And, 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 and there's a big debate what's going on with the public cloud, for example, and what's going on there, and, the, and the, who owns the data, all these kind of mm. things. We have to solve these. And I personally, I really, really hope that in the European Union, we are the forerunners, even though I'm representing here an American company. But, uh, and, and in the European Union, I would like to see that Finland is really the forerunner building things. If you think about the early days of the mobility, we had a great cooperation between regulators, operators, content providers. We built the economy. I was there building the first ringtones, and we wanted that to still day one it to be the real mobile commerce where everybody got their share, copyrights, and everybody was handled handled properly, and so on. So I really, really, I'm really happy to be here to see all this, all, all you building this cool stuff. And we just, I promise that we will provide the platform for you. That's what That's we good. do. <coughs> we'll keep you to, to your promise. <coughs> yeah. um, Challenge me. Uh, Chris, um, what is the metaverse for you? Uh, well, I, I can 100% see the perspective of seeing it as something really big and intangible and so on, but, but I in some ways see it as something very small and simple as well. It's just mm. a way to extend yourself beyond your physical limitations. Mm. And any tool that provides that will in various ways connect you with the metaverse. So it's not necessarily a place like connecting into the matrix and just uh, and being in a coma and experiencing something that doesn't have a connection to real life. So I think it begins with small things that improve uh, your day-to-day -day life or tasks that you're doing or meeting your friends wherever in the world. So it's beyond your physical location and time, basically. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if I understood correctly, you've, you've been um working with VR and headsets. You've been building headsets since the very early days, um, like prototyping um, at Dimension 10, and then now with, with Vario, you're, you're build, building the, the kind of the frontier edge of uh, VR headsets. Yeah. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your, the evolution you've seen in the VR aspect of, of the metaverse and how it relates um, in, in Vario to the metaverse. 
Yeah, uh, just to be clear, I, I, I made some, uh, some uh, headset prototypes in 2012 that be, I was just waiting for VR to become a thing and it I've never seen, happened. I've seen them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh, it, it ended up being just that uh, yeah. and uh, from then on I started making software for it because I had a headset that I had made and no software, of course, no developers had made something for yeah. a headset that I had built. Uh, and that started out as a simple multiplayer uh, entertainment platform where you were supposed to look at videos together and, and so on. But uh, very early on, just for fun, I added uh, hand tracking and some objects that you could look at. And just the communication level that I experienced by being able to point at specific things on an object just started to get the ideas rolling pretty quickly in how powerful this is for communication. And uh, we've also uh, been slightly into, uh, I, I built a a human-sized 3D scanner that could make uh, photorealistic avatars. So we, we were very early on trying to get like the, the avatar in VR uh, needs to really look like you. But we abandoned that because of uh, Uncanny Valley and so on. We're just going to revisit that once all of that, the whole technology stack is, is there to make yourself look like you, if you want to at least. Um, but yeah, uh, for, for many years, uh, most of our focus has been in, on the software side on um, uh, a, the AAC industry because they very naturally could see a lot of the benefits from looking at potential projects, discussing multiple disciplines and so on. Um, and now that we are working, uh, we, we got acquired by Vario and now we're kind of more working with merging that whole uh, future goal of uh, basically augmenting anything, streaming the real world, any use case, getting assistance from someone or just visiting, visiting your family or whatever you want to do, just providing the tools to make that as a smooth, as smooth a process as possible, basically. Yeah. Anthony, what is the metaverse for you? Maybe I'll take the abstraction level a little bit higher. I'm a simple guy and technology is not my strongest parts, but to me, metaverse is really it's a it's location, not a location, but location where you can basically experience uh, present uh, time, uh, past, future, and the imagination. But that means that you have to be able to um, connect there virtually, but also you have to be able to enjoy it um, physically, be there online. As you said, uh, you went yesterday uh, to see the f football game. There is no replacement for feeling the uh, November rain in, uh, on top of you. Uh, you can't do that in VR. You have to be there on, pla uh, on place, on, on site. But then uh, you, what you missed there, which is not widely used, which we also um, published a uh, press release uh, just a few days ago with uh, a Japanese uh, company Rakuten, that you can follow on AR the game and uh, get statistics, follow the uh, players on your uh, uh, smart glasses or on your device and uh, then also get uh, richer experience uh, there. And maybe in future uh, you have uh, something built into your eyes, uh, which uh, then I believe is the uh, real metaverse. Right. <clears throat> so Immersal works, and you've worked with the fusion of the digital space and the physical space. Uh, you're kind of the, the, the middle layer there. So is, is, is Immersal actually the metaverse? Uh, no, we are not, we are not the metaverse, but we're, uh, it's a good question. Um, uh, we are a building block. Uh, with the participants here today, they are participating in the metaverse. As I said, it's a location, or this is a metaverse location. But to create an experience, I don't see anyone here wearing any AR glasses or looking at the space here with their smartphones through the lens of an AR experience, because there is nothing built here. Because uh, also the place has not been yet mapped. Okay, I mapped the uh, space here uh, before uh, we came. It took me uh, one minute. And uh, that's basically giving you an understanding what kind of time frames we are talking about. AR enabling uh, the physical spaces, which is then uh, the next step um, uh, on uh, the enablement of metaverse in any place, anywhere. But 
one thing I wanted to comment also, uh, there was a question, is there a metaverse or metaverses? Uh, there's never going to be a metaverse because um, you can think about, um, for example, a simple example, a power plant. Let's say it's a no nuclear power plant and uh, they need a metaverse there to train their operators, to um, let the um, uh, maintenance people get in there and um, have the um, safe guidance um, to the location. Will they share the metaverse? It's, it is one part of the metaverse. It's a private metaverse. And there's going to be multitude of uh, these private metaverses. And uh, how they connect together is then another story. Mm. And will they connect together? Yeah. So I wanted to go back to one of the, the questions in the, the quick fire around threat or opportunity. Um, some of you said both. Some of you uh, said that, that it's a, a great opportunity. Um, I, I'll take it to, to a kind of philosophical uh, level. What, we're we're going to spend more and more time in these virtual worlds. It's, it's inevitable. But is, is the metaverse needed or... I think you said it's both uh, a threat and an opportunity. And like some people um, are scared that their kids are just going to be spending all of their time in, in virtual worlds and, and it's not going to be good for them. So from a kind of philosophical point of view, I'd just like to hear your, your points of view on, on this threat or opportunity side. Very briefly, it's like any technology can be used for good or bad. And, and currently we have very vivid conversation uh, happening in, in many countries around AI, artificial intelligence. What, what it would be, what it mean to have a, a responsible AI? And, and that's not an easy, easy thing. And for example, in Microsoft we have the whole, um, whole processes around that. When we are building something, it's, 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 it is a... Uh, R A I like we call it. So, any technology. You mentioned nuclear power. Mm. Good or bad? Internet, good or bad? Mm. So it has both. And uh, of course, my cup is always half full. So I would like to say it, and, and I strongly believe that it's it's a good thing. So there's more opportunities than threat. That's why we should go there. But then we come, in fact, very practical things that how we should regulate it, who should re regulate it, and, and all the ethics inside the metaverse. And it's there today. If you think about this next version of internet, mobile internet, whatever it is, the same, same things will follow you there. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Um, what Oli was saying about how, how we're going to build the metaverse, it's, it's a lot about that. It's, there's huge opportunities to just be a, a democratic metaverse, an open metaverse, open to everybody and equal to, to everybody. Um, <clears throat> Laura, I think you, you probably, um, you said you had kind of encounters with people who are not technical at all and, and they kind of understand, well, Everybody's talking about the metaverse, but what is this? And, and they can be a bit scared of, of the metaverse. Yeah, and, and all this like technical stuff around it, of course, because most people are not very, I think we are, we who are here know a whole lot more about metaverse than a normal person you meet on the street. But I think that's why it's really important that we talk about it uh, about like on a very concrete level, uh, that it's sort of like is already here. It's nothing like that Facebook is just going to like splash at our face and take our privacy away if it hasn't already or stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, but it's more like that. It's a bit like, um, you know, uh, when I was at, at high school and the, and the internet came and, and then, you know, it, they used to have these like uh, computer classrooms in high schools back in the days. And then you would like to, you know, there was always those geeky guys that would be sitting there and doing stuff with the internet and then me as like a like a non, not so geeky would like just 
go and try to approach them and, and be a little apologetic that I'm just writing my Word document here and I don't really get much about this internet stuff. So I wouldn't like to have anything like that in this society, but rather than anyone who's interested about this and understand already like what kind of impact the internet or social media has had on, on us on a general level. So I think that I hope we, we will be able to make these things very concrete and not so frightening without, of course, forgetting the regulation and, and that kind of important stuff. But uh, like the mothers I speak with are like afraid that, oh my God, if I buy this VR headset, I will never see my kids again because they will be like, I will, I will lose them in some sort of a virtual world. But that it wouldn't be like that. Of course, uh, it's only max two hours per day and, and, and then eventually maybe when they have moved away to college, uh, you might have your own virtual headset and meet them somewhere in the metaverse, and then it would actually make them, it would make you guys to connect rather than uh, tearing you apart. I think with VR, there's still the natural restriction of, you can't really have a headset on for more than two hours before you have <laughs> a, a headache or a, a, yeah, a, sl probably. a slit in your, your, um, your head. Um, but how, just how will the metaverse manifest itself to, to the everyday people? Uh, I think, as I also said already, and I think uh, some of the others agree, that the metaverse is here. It's just a question of um, how deep we are in it and how much of the metaverse um, functions and features we are using. It's um, like the internet. It's just gradually creeping around us and it's upon us and upon the legislators also, is it going to be a threat or an opportunity? Yeah. But we can't avoid it. It is here to stay. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think that with Metaverse, uh, there are some things that like don't automatically make sense. Like for instance, the thing with the NFTs that, uh, that on the surface, it just looks crazy that some rich people are paying millions and millions of just some like, uh, you know, a bunch of pixels somewhere. It doesn't make sense at all. But then if you dig deeper into that and understand a bit more about the logic behind it, why it exists, then it can also provide some benefits. You start to understand that, okay, actually, there might be something into this. This might have to do something with the future development and it, it might also be a good thing. Uh, but I think that this is also like once more something that if you just see NFT and oh, too hard, I don't understand. I'm not going to understand that. So then you sort of don't get on board. Yeah. So just once again, getting back to this, we need to be more understandable. Yeah. Th there's one, one thing that I, I, I just realized a few weeks ago. With the internet, it came actually for information workers. Like most of us, I think all of us here are information workers. But when we look at now, what's the, where's the metaverse used? It's many of those cases are actually with the field workers, the frontline workers, as we call them. And this is pretty interesting because actually now those guys who are there next to pre uh, repairing something or or they have the assistant. Uh, helping them, okay, we have a hole and stuff, we have the guides and things and blah, blah, yada, yada, yada. So actually it's coming from that front and not, not from the information workers like internet game. And, and I see this, this is super cool because yeah. actually those use cases are totally different. And now, okay, we are now discussing about how it will be consumerized, how the consumers, how it will be the everyday life. But the history is totally different there than with the internet. No, I absolutely agree. Yeah, that's great. And yeah. it's cool. It, it yeah. is cool. And maybe it's like it's easy to see the return on investment if you don't have to deal with like moving like super big machinery or something or m moving people from one continent to another. Uh, so, of course, then when, we, when you talk about the normal marketing manager about metaverse and whether their company should be present at metaverse right now or not, that's a bit more like complex issue because they see that there are of course, there are opportunities, but when is the right moment? What would it mean for us? Will our clients be there? There are a lot of questions. Mm. Yeah, I think the, the B2B side is kind of 
you could see that say that Teams is kind of the the gateway drug to to the metaverse. <laughs> um, I mean, during you the, said that, not <laughs> the <laughs> during the pandemic, the lockdowns, everybody's been forced to to use like virtual um, meeting tools, whether it's Google Meet or Teams or or Zoom or whatever. Um, but that that kind of sets everybody in the same mind frame that we are. This is the way to go. So, I mean, how will it manifest itself? Uh, to everyday work work life and, and the B2B environment. Now we are already kind of in a hybrid state. What could be the next evolution of it? You already mentioned the, the front, um, the, the workers on the front lines, so they are already deep into the metaverse, if you want to call it, but what's kind of the next iteration? It, it, it's the sticky applications. Okay? It's um, the kind of applications that people want to use, and they see the value you know, there. And as, uh, I had the example of this uh, soccer game application in Japan. Uh, I think that's a great example of um, getting people to use, getting the soccer fans uh, to use uh, the metaverse. They don't realize that they are using it, and they don't need to realize it. Mm. Because uh, metaverse, again, is uh, it's a buzzword, but it's mainly a buzzword among us in this room and in uh, this virtual room we are, we are talking about. But, uh, the users, they don't really care okay, if it's mm. metaverse or if they're just using an application uh, that uh, connects them uh, to the uh, real environment where, where they are. Mm. They don't care. It's the applications. Yeah, like, I mean, with, with Vario, I, I don't think any of the, the automotive industry workers who have tremendously benefited from uh, collaborating on a, on a 3D uh, model of a car and not having to fly over or actually build the, the, the model and, and have everybody fly over it there and, and work on it. They, they probably don't care if it's metaverse, they probably mm. care more that it's convenient, it's, it's mm. um, return on investment, it's savings, it's good for the planet, le less travel. Um, so um, <clears throat> you've also been working on, on this kind of uh, um, teleportation uh, software. So can you talk to us a little bit about what, what the, um, the view is on on the Vario Cloud Reality, is it called? Yeah, so uh, it, it basically is about moving, removing as many barriers as possible to be able to communicate around something. So you had one example of being physically different places in the world, and, uh, and that wraps around either having a 3D model of a car that someone is planning to build, mm. and then having multiple people around that, or actually having a, a, a real-life physical object that someone is live streaming uh, a point cloud or a, or a volumetric video from and having an engineer standing beside them and appearing to them, uh, explaining how to fix something on the engine, for instance. And that needs to be as smooth of an experience as possible because the, the market in tools, different tools for very specific uh, tasks today is very fragmented. So you have to launch all of these hundreds of different tools and go to a different computer and put like it's very tasking to do right now. It's still giving benefits, but when, once you get to the point of like as easy as just picking up a phone and calling someone, you can just put the headset on, get someone else in there, and you're talking about whatever you want to share with that mm. person. That has to happen around the cloud, and we have to have the right tools around with like almost like a one-click button, and you have a scan of the room, for instance. Mm. But when you when you get to that level, you're not just going to have the the engineers that maybe saves $1 million by mm. not having to travel to, to discover a problem. But I, I will add something to that, that while not having to travel is a great example, uh, compared to video conferencing, which is great, you never have a situation where people is in, in one room and they say, hey, it's better to bring up our computers and talk through Teams. If they're in front of each other, they will talk to each other. But uh, in, in XR and VR, people will still, in that room, go into VR together because it, it extends your abilities in so many ways. Mm -hmm. So it's, just, it's not just an, a replacement for travel, it's augmenting a lot of other things as well. I think that's a, that's a very important aspect. It's hard for us to bring AI into the physical world. But it's a non-brainer. It's super easy to do that in a virtual world. And, and in Finnish, I, I don't say tekoäly, I often say tukiäly, supporting intelligence for you. And this is, for example, you, you get, we can translate easily the talk 
and stuff like that when we are meeting there. And infusing AI is a huge area. And uh, that's a huge opportunity for anybody in this room that what, what, how, what we could do there and, and for good, hopefully for good and not only for bad. Um, just picking up on, on kind of your tools and, and, and that infra, the picks and shovels, um, a lot of times people are talking about interoperability when it comes to the metaverse, uh, meaning how, how can we ensure that in order to build the metaverse we're actually able to have data in place in one place and then have it transferred to another so it's not secluded and siloed into different tools and met multiple metaverses. Um, how, like, for you, for example, how, are you are you looking at, at this? I mean, yes, Mark it's, Zuckerberg it's, said, it's, it's, it he said all the right things in his yeah. keynote about yeah. privacy and then interoperability. He yeah. knows he can't build it himself. Who wants to get back to this metaverse supporting Netscape 3.0 or newer? No Internet Explorer. You remember that stuff. Most of you remember that stuff. And it's not even that long time ago. So this is something that we as an industry, we have to be driving open APIs. For us, we build a Microsoft Cloud, but it has to be open in every layer. And that's, that's where we are aiming to. And, uh, and uh, it also relates then to the regulation and, and these questions, who owns the data, where is your data, yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. But really, we have to drive the openness. And I think, uh, hopefully, the industry has learned from the past. That, 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 actually, that is at least the work that we are doing. <coughs> Yeah, I would, I would say, uh, just add to that, in, in terms of like the, the industry it, itself learning, um, I'm 100% uh, confident that ev everyone at Vario just wants to make everyone's lives better and so on. And that's not a doubt for me, but still, uh, I, there are so, so many things that I don't want to be left to individual companies to, mm. to decide. So there, there definitely needs to be some sort of reg regulation uh, based on all of the infinite power you have to read people's intentions and, and being able to affect how they think when you have brain-computer interfaces and you're measuring people's mm. pupil dilation. And, you know, there, there's so much damage you could do with that. So I don't trust individual companies to do the right thing. There. We, ne we need uh, better legislation, in my opinion. Mm, yeah, but there needs to be incentives also for the companies to... Um, say, perform according to the um, regulation. So the regulation needs to be good. I don't know how to um, answer that, but uh, setting up the re regulation is not an easy task. Here. No. But and I open, maybe I can uh, say one ahead. thing about openness also. Uh, one of the areas where we are working very strongly uh, is obviously the uh, spatial mapping and uh, visual positioning and the map formats that we create. Uh, we provide uh, at the user, the uh, possibility, whoever they are, to basically uh, share the maps and share the uh, data that they have. But we also have seen it that uh, many of our customers, they want to own the maps and uh, the localizing capability. And it's understandable when we talk about, uh, again, uh, these nuclear power plants or uh, some uh, security uh, secure places, that's where they need to be secure. But we offer uh, the uh, maps to be open. Yeah, I was just uh, related to what Chris said about that no single company should rule that. Do you believe that it would be possible to have this sort of like a de decentralized metaverse where there is like regulations that go above uh, individual companies that that would rather be like like a world where we are living now that there are a lot of different kind of countries and then there are regulations that it wouldn't be like that it's going to be either Facebook or, or Fortnite. If, if we open up the, the panel or the talk to DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations, I, I think we're going <laughs> to lose half of our audience. <laughs> so let's, let's not go there. But uh, just like building the metaverse and, and regulation, um, I mean, you have these, these big incumbents. Like we've all seen what, what uh, Facebook or Meta is doing. Um, Epic has a has a billion in, in new money to build their view of the metaverse. Granted, Tim Sweeney is talking a lot about the open metaverse, um, but what's the, 
what's the, the chances of small startups from the Nordics uh, building something meaningful in, in the, the metaverse? Is it Huge, yeah. Mm. So we have, we, have, we have these stories from the past, and it seems to me that every time the exit is bigger and bigger and bigger. So go for it. I'm getting maybe too old for that, but <laughs> any youngsters there in the metaverse, just do it. Yeah, I would say it, it, the chances are 100%. It, it's, it's not even a question. It, it don't fall for the, uh, for the mistake of thinking someone is too big of a uh, comp competitor. Uh, if, if Facebook had thought that when MySpace was the biggest, yeah. they wouldn't have tried either because MySpace seemed to be unbeatable when they were like the, the largest social platform. So, so the 100% chance for Nordic startups to do massive impacts. Maybe I can say a word here, as um, Immersal was just acquired four months ago by Hexagon. I am very happy that they are a European company, Stockholm stock listed uh, as their headquarters. But then again, to make it big, so um, we don't in Europe have the same kind of resources that, for example, us, we could have um, stock list ourselves and get the funding. There is not enough, still not enough risk funding to put into the highly risky We're, we're trying to get startups. there. We're, we're <laughs> getting there. there. Will you, will, exactly. you will do that, but uh, uh, we were acquired. We didn't make an IPO. Yeah. And yeah, but the, but, the, but the opportunity, this is related to so many big things. And because we are now talking about virtual things, okay, there's also the, the, the real world uh, blended in there. It, exponential growth, it's, it's evident. Yeah. And now it's a question that, okay, of course, we, everybody can have a, millions of good ideas after a few beers and stuff, but <laughs> it's also a question about how to, how to execute. And you have execution, execution is, the, is the thing. And of course, for, in Finland, lack of maybe people, uh, uh, hard, to get, hard to hire new, new ones, somebody, yada, 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 I have heard that, but still, mm. it's a global market. So now it's a question that how the Finnish idea can do the global domination. The market is even more global now than what it was at, 18, yeah, yeah, 18 yeah, months yeah, ago. Yeah. And one definition of or statement about the metaverse is that um, it's the, the internet built by game, develop, game developers. Um, so Finland, this is your, your time to shine. We, we have plenty of game developers mm. already here. Um, <clears throat> so... Microsoft, uh, like Finland, played a big role in, in the development of the, um, the HoloLens. So, what are your plans for for, you, for for Finland? What's your main activities? What what are you looking at here in, in Finland specifically? Okay, yeah, HoloLens HoloLens has heritage here in, here in Finland, but, but in in general, why I'm working for Microsoft? It's a great platform, and my Personally, my duty here is to bring as much as possible the money from the U.S. to the Finnish partners. So basically, okay, Holland is just one thing. It's, a, it's an endpoint. It's important that it's a, it's a nice technology, but we have a partners. We have Wario. We have plenty of partners. Microsoft is an open ecosystem. This is not your father's Microsoft anymore, by the way, for the <laughs> elder people there may be watching this. So, so building the ecosystem, cloud and edge. This is all about intelligent cloud and intelligent edge. Boom. <laughs> uh, I think I saw that some, someone was trying to, to build an NFT around Clippy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember that fellow. Uh, Zoan, um, what's next? New concerts? new virtual spaces for the, the, the B2B space. What's exciting you right now? Yeah, um, well, currently, I think the most interesting thing is actually this B2B. We've been working with uh, several uh, large companies, also both in Finland and, and, and outside Finland, and we already have a, like um, a few clients where we actually that we are sort of running their metaverse. It's it's like a small one, but it's something that they are they are willing to invest in and build on, to use it uh, for 
many purposes. In the beginning, it's mostly like marketing events, stuff like that. But we can definitely see that, 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 that there are a lot of stuff you could do with different kind of like virtual twins and stuff like that. So, so, so that's, I think, our number one thing at the moment. We haven't forgotten about the concerts either. I'm going to tell more about that uh, later today. And then uh, one big thing, which I actually can mention, which we're going which we're gonna launch tomorrow, it's our uh, virtual headquarter. So basically, the way of working is also changing, as we all know. And as we have like uh, some guys who work in Australia or Japan or in the US, so we are now going towards to move our headquarters to virtual space instead of Helsinki. And uh, there's going to be a, a launch tomorrow together, actually, with Vario uh, around this. So, and of course, still virtual Helsinki, for instance, discussions going on with them. What should we do with them? Should Helsinki actually own virtual Helsinki? We don't want to have that responsibility. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, a lot of things going on, but that's, I think that's like the, the focus at the moment. Yeah, sounds exciting. I mean, uh, South Korea has been very, very active, even on a governmental level, to, to build metaverse alliances locally, domestically. Um, so, city of Helsinki, you should definitely have your eye on the ball here. Um, so, Chris, um, Vario tackled um, the battle for, for human eye resolution. What's the, the next frontier? What's the next big battle? I would say it's like the combination of the, the tools that we're providing, uh, both as uh, local stuff you can install in your computer, but especially uh, cloud services that just more or less expands the blank canvas that uh, our customers or end users have to just uh, ma make their own experiences, just provide the tools for someone to make it. Uh, that's going to be pretty important in the in the coming years. And we'll just keep providing hardware to, to achieve that, but uh, the, the main point is as much freedom as possible to just tether the metaverse to the real world in different ways. Yeah. Anthony, you've, you've worked a lot with telcos and, and operators. Um, what do you see the role and the significance of 5G and, and advanced networks in, in this space? Uh, telcos are desperately looking for the applications to push the edge cloud and the um, multiple uh, access uh, edge computing platforms and AR is the perfect use case there because it requires the uh, low latency, uh, it benefits the uh, high throughput um, in the uh, bandwidth there. So uh, we are working with um, several global telcos on um, creating the concept and creating the first uh, POCs uh, to deploy those and this Rakuten example was also in the, on their 5G network and working on their 5G Mac, Mac platforms. Yeah. Um, so just open to the floor, what, what kind of exciting companies are you seeing right now in this, in this space or maybe exciting use cases if you don't want to single out a, a company? I think Urho made a good point earlier today that we need we need definitely more content. We need just just people to do the content and 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 get. You mentioned that uh, this is a metaverse is a, is a playground for for game developers. It's not just a game developers. It's any content. People coming from the the diversity. We have to get the full diversity of of, of professionals building this from from not just the techie people or not just the gaming people. People coming from the different backgrounds and and, uh, and and that's the only way to have this to be inclusive because that's something that I really want to see more inclusive uh, metaverse than the internet is now currently right now yeah yeah, yeah. I fully agree uh, more an example um, in two weeks there's going to be the exterior the fashion uh, virtual fashion show or fashion conference where we are also helping to build that and it's been so exciting to talk with the fashion people like mm. how to make fashion work in virtual reality whether it will be like physical fashion that we bring to virtual reality or like native virtual fashion that you can buy apparels uh, in, 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 in a metaverse so I think this is probably what you just said, that sort of introducing this to new people and getting them along. Uh, I think that's exactly what we need. Yeah. 
Yeah, as I think uh, you said, content is king, and um, I think uh, you are in a happy position, um, Laura, uh, developing the content, uh, because that is where uh, the pull is coming from the market. Uh, and uh, on the company side, which um, I see, and on the, let's say, territory side, I see Japan being extremely active. We are working there with several um, 5G operators and also um, content providers, uh, and one content provider above um, many others uh, is a company called uh, Designium. You can find them um, in uh, uh, Twitter, like the Designium, uh, on my understanding, is uh, worth following. Great. Um, <clears throat> I'll go back to, to, we've been discussing about the, the metaverse, the future, uh, what it's going to be like. Uh, so I want to fall back to one question that I had earlier. The metaverse, threat or opportunity? Opportunity. Mostly opportunity. Yeah, I would say mostly opportunity as well. Both, still. Yeah. Still. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd turn you around. <laughs> um, great, so just let's do a, a quick round of plugs. Um, Vesku, where can people find you and who do you want to talk to? Pardon? Where, where can people find you? Uh, where can they talk with you and who do you want to talk to? Vesco.com. Laura. Well, you can find me at so and we want to talk with people first of all who are interested in creating content for the metaverse, but also uh, people like talented students who want to be helping us to build the meta metaverse, like actually doing stuff there. So just um, check out soan.fi and you'll find either me or the, uh, my colleagues there. Yeah, you can contact me through vario.com and uh, when, whenever you want any demos or any discussions about possible use cases, just reach out. Uh, myself, Anthony at uh, immersal.com or uh, on Twitter, a vestery. So uh, that's where you find me. Great. Um, and me, you can find me on LinkedIn, all the usual social media on Twitter. I'm at P. Raya Halme. Um, I want to really thank you uh, an hour. That's a long time. I want to thank you. Yeah, an hour is you. a really long time. <laughs> You've been very patient. Um, I think we, we ended up, besides Anthony, we ended up uh, on an almost entirely positive note. So, I know. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Thank you.